But when you came here from North, you know, when you came here, you uh, you were the focal point of your offense to a certain extent, weren't you, in high school? Or at least yeah. you got a lot of, you oh, know, yeah. here oh. you're lucky to get three th balls thrown your way sometimes. So I don't know if I even had 12 in high school. So, yeah. you know, that, that was, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, yeah I you. So what, is it, what does it mean to you to be more of a focal point, I guess, as you move forward here? You know, it means a lot, you know. So, I mean, I'm just going to do what I can do and do it at my best so I can give the best at the time I need. What's, what's, well, it somebody else good, what's it take to be a good kick return? What's the best attitude you have to have? Run. You <laughs> got to run. Because, you know, people come at you full speed, so you just got to run by them, try to run by them full speed. But And then when you see the seam, you got to make the cut. Do you like return? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. And why? Why? Just another chance, you know, to make a play. And, um, you know, I feel like I could excite the crowd and get the uh, offense in a, a good position, you know, and I feel like I was doing that. Kedja, where, where, do you, where have you really made strides? Where have you gotten the coach's attention from your vantage point of being more a part of the offense? Where, where, where did you get better, if that's what you want to call it, this year, maybe compared to last year? I feel like the um, ability after the catch, you know, just making cuts, making people miss and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And did you work? how much did you work on that? I mean, where, where did that come from, the I feel improvement? Like it came from confidence, you know. And then doing it in practice on people, and I know that would translate to the game. Yeah. yeah. Urban and JT both said Iowa has a very good defense. What stands out to you when you watch them on film? Uh, you know they have uh, very good corners, um, and I feel like they have uh, their linebackers. They coming downhill, so they come in head first type stuff. So I mean they're a lot of they're aggressive. So you know we respect them a lot, and so we go into the game with a game plan to uh, help win. Josie Jewell, a player who stands out for what they do on defense. You said what? Josie Jewell, their middle linebacker. Yeah. He stands out a lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, he, he's one of those coming head first. So, you know, if I got to block him, I got to bring bring something with it. Do, do you really, I mean, do, do a, does a guy like that really just jump out on video when you watch him? I mean, his attitude or his yeah, you ability? Can tell, you can tell he's running the show on film, you know. Um, and he's all over the ball. You know, he's everywhere in right places. So, yeah, yeah he definitely stands out. KJ, some people say that this could be a trap game for you guys, especially after you know the mental, physical wear and tear that you had to go through last weekend against mm -hmm. Penn State. How's this week of practice been for you guys, and do you get that sense maybe there's a little bit of a lull that you could, uh, you know, possibly? Nah, we in? we looking at it as another college football game. You know, that's how we take a practice, and you know we coming at uh, this game like any other game. Did you guys, I don't know, for want of another term, get over the hump? Saturday with that kind of win, with that kind of comeback effort, is there a different feel this week than there was this this time a week ago from the standpoint of a confidence or, you know, everybody kept waiting for you guys to play Penn State to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely a confident uh, builder, you know, for being Penn State, you know, they were a great team. Um, but also though, like, like I said, you know, going forward, you know, you just got to keep practicing like how we've been practicing because they up the practice on us even more just so we can keep going. And, you know, like versus Penn State, that was, that's why we got through that game, you know. Mm -hmm. um, how hard we was practicing, you could tell they was tired, we was good, we were still ready to go. So I feel like that's what's been helping us. You know, somebody asked uh, JT earlier this evening if he was in a zone mm -hmm. <laughs> on Saturday night, and he basically said, you know, I'm playing play to play, and I see, and I try to throw the ball and complete it. And I, what, what, from your vantage point, was your quarterback in, in the zone there, especially fourth quarter? Yeah, you could tell, you know, uh, he was leading us down the field. And, you know, he was calm the whole time, so we fed off his energy. What, what, how would you describe, especially some of those throws he made in the fourth quarter, his arm? Just like we know all the other stuff he does, but we don't. I feel like we don't talk about his arm a ton. Yeah. What did he do to make those throws in that spot? I mean, he did what he was coached to do and practice to do with Coach Rod Day. You see it every day. You know, they work on those throws, and then he was putting it in the tight spots. So he was very accurate at the times. KJ, you guys continued to run. I call it crossbow, but, you I mean, you guys cross in the middle, things like that. Uh, y'all didn't do – I'm not even sure y'all even had that last year. I don't remember oh, seeing it. But I guess confidence-wise, what does it give you confidence from the standpoint of knowing that stuff is still working even against a good defense? Uh, I feel like it's unstoppable that play, because uh, uh, you don't know who's getting the ball. You don't know where 
where are people going. So it's just putting athletes in space. Yeah, because I, I think JT, you know, a lot of times he's thrown to that middle guy who settles down, but yeah. I think he hits you on like a clear, you clear it on through, and he hits you on the right side, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's basically pick your poison, who you want to throw to, you know, because yeah. it can't be stopped. Look at that smile. <laughs> it can't be stopped. <laughs> hey, uh, Austin Mack the other day said, JT Barrett, one of the best college quarterbacks of all time. I'm assuming you're going to agree gonna get, with that assessment. So what, what is it that puts him up there? Like unless you want to disagree with the assessment. I don't nah, mean to put words in your mouth. But. I agree. You know, you know, sometimes you see quarterbacks not as calm as him when things go wrong. So, like, when things going wrong, not going our way, he keep us calm. You know, as receivers, you know, you just be anxious and stuff. But, like, I feel like his calmness and how he just leads the team and being a captain, that's what makes him a great quarterback. This, okay, help me figure out this dichotomy because we've heard about his fiery pregame speeches. Mm -hmm. And now you're describing as like the ultimate Zen master. He's got this super level of calm that he can get to. Does, does he, I, I don't understand. How does that work? That's a question for JT. I don't know. But does he seem like two different guys but in the locker room pregame speech and then on the field in the fourth quarter? I mean, I feel like it's still in him. It's just on the field. It just he just don't show it on the outside. Controlled fire. Yeah, controlled fire. It's a good word. Well, thank you. Well, One then I will put words in your mouth. <laughs>